This moment, I believe, was not made for the United Church of Christ, but the United Church of Christ was made for such moments. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to our viewers of Conversations with John. I am happy to have as my guest this week, um, none other than Tracy Blackman, Associate General Minister for the United Church of Christ, a dear friend of mine and the pastor of Christ the King, United Church of Christ in Florissant, Missouri. Tracy, welcome and uh, why don't you say hi to our viewers and maybe add a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Wonderful. Well, thank you for this opportunity, John. I get to speak to you a lot, but not in this format. So this is new uh, and I'm excited about that. And hello to all the viewers who watch and listen um, as our general minister and president discusses a wide array of topics. So um, I think he said enough. I've been around a while and most people know who I am. So I don't think I don't feel the need to do any more with that. So the, the first thing I want to ask you about, you and, and Karen Georgia and I have had many conversations over the last few months about the role of the United Church of Christ, first in the midst of an unfolding global pandemic, and more recently, as once again, America wrestles with its legacy of race hate. Uh, why don't you say a word about what you see the role of the United Church of Christ in the midst of this being? Hmm. I'd be delighted to talk about that. Um, I'm not a big car buff, so I, I'm trying to remember exactly whose slogan this was, but uh, there, there used to be a car manufacturing company that had this slogan that they were built for the road ahead. Um, and I want to say it was Ford, but it may not have been Ford. I remember, uh, but I also Ford. can't tell you. Yeah, that. you know, um, <laughs> that's how I feel about the United Church of Christ in this moment. Um, I feel like the United Church of Christ was built for the road ahead. Um, I feel like in most denominations, um, there is a diversity of thought, a diversity of theological understanding, a diversity of positions, both social positions and political positions. And the United Church of Christ is no different in that, except that we have a covenant that says we're gonna make space for everyone. And that in spite of our differences, we're gonna move forward together. And because we own that outright, I think it opens up space for us to take a leadership role in what is going to be necessary to not just move through the current chaos of the moment, but move through that chaos with a commitment to not leaving anyone behind. I'm excited about what is opening up. I'm excited about the opportunity to engage with one another in uninterrupted time uh, because we're all sheltering in space. I'm excited about the long legacy of the United Church of Christ and being up front and out front on various justice issues. I'm excited about our legacy of being the first to take a stance on issues in terms of denominational presence and faith and that continues. And so um, this moment, I believe, was not made for the United Church of Christ, but the United Church of Christ was made for such moments. <laughs> and I feel that it is the time for us to um, be bold and prophetic in our witness in ways that are not new to us, um, but that are a continuation of our legacy and that our voice will make a difference in this moment. So um, I join the grief and the mourning of all those lives lost. I'm located in St. Louis, Missouri for the sheltering in place. Um, we just hit a thousand deaths lost to COVID over 90 days, right? Um, and the entire nation, the entire world actually is reeling from the impacts of COVID-19. Um, <clears throat> and we can't be enough present for that. Simultaneously, we are reeling from the impacts of racial injustice playing out in ways that we have not seen and the world responding in ways that we have not seen. And we are reeling from voter suppression playing out at the same time and 
We are reeling from the economic and social disparities that have been present with us uh, since we appeared on this land. Uh, so it's a, it's a complex moment, but it is a moment ripe for opportunity for the voice of the United Church of Christ. So you oversee in the national setting as our Associate General Minister, um, the area of operations that deal with justice and local church ministries. Let's start with local church ministries. Uh, my next question will be about the work of justice, but let's start with local church ministries. Uh, you've talked about the role of the United Church of Christ. That only means something if, if it gets lived out at every level of the denomination all the way down to the local church. What are you seeing at the local church level um, that leads you to believe that the United Church of Christ was built for a moment like this? Oh my gosh, John. Um, you know that I've often shared with you that it's hard for me to divorce justice work from the local church of Christ, um, local church of the United Church of Christ. I, I consider um, what I get to do is the privilege of leading the, the heart and the head work, right? The, the head and the foot work. Um, so the, the living out of justice and the living out of faith happens at the local church level. And we are seeing extraordinary um, examples of that in our local church settings, uh, whether it be the churches that are engaging in justice in new ways or engaging in faith formation and spiritual development in new ways. Both of them are necessary for our witness. Our witness is not um, divorced from our discipleship. And, um, and churches are showing up in amazing ways. I mean, here in, in Missouri, we have Christ Church that has been providing sanctuary uh, for Alex for now over two years and have gone, has gone all the way to capital, to the capital with petitions for his right to be reunited with his family without fear. And that's just an example of what is certainly happening on our borders with our churches, uh, our California churches, our Arizona churches, all all of those churches are involved in the immigration battles that are happening right now. The showing up of Black Lives Matter and movement for justice against police brutality and against racial discrimination in the Central Atlantic Conference, uh, who has already trained their local churches and how to show up in that moment, um, ha already has a racial justice program that has their own manual and their own um, guidance about how to involve, be involved in these issues. It's everywhere that the United Church of Christ is showing up, the local level, leading the way for their community and then sharing their learning and their knowledge with the national level and with our conferences as well. You are also, um, from your seat as an officer of the United Church of Christ, bearing witness to a church adapting to uh, life in and during a global pandemic. And as you've already referred to, these adaptations aren't necessarily just for the time being. They're probably leading us forward into a new way of being. What are some of the things that you're bearing witness to uh, in terms of a church adapting to, responding to, and meeting the needs of its members during this season? Oh my gosh. I think I want to lift up in this moment um, the privilege of having, if you would say, an inside view of what is happening with our conference leadership. Our conference um, ministers are rising to this occasion in extraordinary ways. Uh, and because you and I both are on threads and email chains and base camps with our conference ministers, we are both getting to witness the collaborative spirit with which people are sharing information that is needed for all the conferences. Um, the way that they're working together, like the worship service they put together was amazing, um, that they invited us to be a part of. Uh, and I've watched them on justice initiatives time and time again come together as a body of conference ministers and say, 
what shall we do here? What are you doing over here? How does that impact over here? Um, and it's been a joy and a delight to watch and to be able to participate in some ways. So I'm grateful uh, for that witness and for the ways that we are all understanding that this is all of our work, not just the national setting, not just the conference ministers, uh, not just the ministers on the ground, um, but it's providing us a greater opportunity to lift up what is happening all over our denomination. Um, and I'm, I'm incredibly proud of that, as I know you are as well. I am. We were talking shortly before we started the interview uh, about opportunities that we've both had to experience joy in the midst of this. Mm -hmm. um, where are you finding your joy in this season? So <clears throat> I'm finding joy in family because I travel so much. I have 80% of my time on the road um, in this prolonged period of just being still uh, has allowed me to reconnect in ways that are very important to me. Um, I'm finding joy in my church as a local pastor because as you know, and maybe some in your audience know, and maybe some don't, I'm transitioning from being a local pastor. And so being able to watch the church um, with its own legs, figuring out what is next for them, um, and how they want to move through this season of transition into their next um, and enjoying and just thanking God for the privilege of having been able to serve with them for 11 years um, and reflecting upon the growth we've had in those 11 years and becoming excited with them about what the future will hold for them. That's joy for me. Uh, I find great joy. Uh, I'm probably going to get in trouble for this, but I think that um, I have the privilege of serving with the most dynamic team in the United Church of Christ in justice <laughs> and local church ministries. Um, and all of the officers will make the same claim, but I'm telling the truth about it. <laughs> um, and so watching justice and local church ministries come together um, and strategize together and work together uh, for the betterment of our entire denomination has also been an incredible journey. Um, so we are, as you know, starting the launch of Manual on Church. Uh, that working group has begun. And that working group was a collaboration between local church ministries and justice and witness ministries. And Chris Davis is holding that body of work, but she's assembled a wide array of, array of people from all across the denomination who did not, who were offered the opportunity to suspend work for the rest of this year because of COVID and chose not to. Instead, we want to continue this work because this work is so critical to the, to the life of the church. So bearing witness to those kinds of things, bearing witness to collaborations between OPTIC and justice and local church ministries and wider church ministries as well, as we promote a debt abolishment program to go throughout all the regions of the church and speak as our collective witness against economic injustice, I find joy in that. I find joy in emails with people having new ideas and new ways to be church um, and working to try to help implement some of those. I just want our viewers to note, I just heard you say you find joy in emails. Yes, in those emails, yes. not in all emails. What's the qualification there? In those emails, in the emails that have new ideas and new ways and new, new opportunities to stretch. I find joy in the, in the, rising voice of Pilgrim Press again, and the authors from within the church, within local settings, uh, who are stretching their pen and their wings and giving voice of a progressive voice in a time when it's deeply needed. It's beautiful. There really is, and, and uh, you get to experience this as an offer of this officer of this denomination. There really is a great deal of joy and gratification watching the church be the church. Um, and we get to do that in good times and in times of immense pain and grief as we're living through right now. And it's important to note that even in the midst of that, we bear witness to the joy 
that is the church unfolding in times such as this. Um, Tracy, I want to thank you for being my guest this week on Conversations with John. And, so, and as always, I, I give our guests the last word. Uh, what do you want to share with our viewers before we say goodbye? Well, thank you for this opportunity, John. Um, and I want to also call to our attention that with those joys and with those opportunities, we bear great responsibility. Uh, for we're not in this moment simply as people who are in this moment, but we are in this moment as people of faith. And people of faith have a unique responsibility, not just to go for the win, but to go for transformation, um, to go for redemption, to hold space for reconciliation, to not throw anyone away, no matter what has happened. It is an awesome responsibility. And I can't think of any body of people that I would rather be doing this work with than those who are in the United Church of Christ who have already demonstrated their ability to act in those ways that mirror the ways of the Afro-Semitic Palestinian we follow, whose name is Jesus. Thank you, John. Thank you, Tracy, and thank you to our viewers for tuning in once again. This has been Conversations with John. I've been honored to share my conversation this week with my friend and officer, uh, Associate General Minister, the Reverend Tracy Blackman. Thank you. <laughs>